we're gonna I'm gonna do the same. We're gonna we're gonna turn the stage over to Paul. Uh, everybody, uh, we're really happy to uh, have Paul join us today. Paul's one of the best de expedition leaders on a planet. He's been to many rare places and had some very successful trips. And uh, he's now co-leading an effort to get to Mother's Nature's uh, <laughs> toughest uh, challenge out there. Um, Mother Nature has a way of saying, go home, doesn't it, Paul? <laughs> it certainly does. Uh, we were told to go home from South Sandwich in South Georgia, but we're ready for to go back. Yep. If anybody can do it, I think you guys can. So <clears throat> I'm going to stop sharing and give the uh, stage to you. You can take over and tell us all about this exciting trip. Great. I don't know if you have any um, any video that you're going to show any uh, any audio rather, but uh, if you are, there's a couple buttons that you, you can check when you bring your slides up. If you have no audio, don't worry about it. Uh, I'm sharing my slides. Can you see them? Yes, I can. Okay, great, great. Good. Well, thank you for that really nice uh, introduction. You're you're too kind. Um, hello, everyone. It's great to be with you at IDXC today. I'm really pleased to tell you about our plans for the 3Y0J D expedition. But first, it brings me great pleasure to announce the recipient of the 2020 Intrepid Spirit Award. Why isn't my slide changing? Uh-oh, technical difficulty here. There it is. The recipient of the 2020 Intrepid Spirit Award is Johannes Hopkinscheid, 5T5 PA. Johannes made 35,000 CUSOs during the COVID-19 shutdown in 2020. And since his stay in Mauritania, he's made 192,514 CUSOs, which is just an incredible amount. Um, we're really pleased to honor Johannes with our Intrepid Spirit Award this year. Let me tell you about the 3Y0J de-expedition. I often feel like organizing a major de-expedition is much like being a Hollywood film producer. You have this idea or this vision in your head. You share your vision with others and you gather investors in your project. You assemble a team and you devise a script or a plan. Your team is the actors and the venue and the bands are your stage. Your audience supports your mission with their gratitude and their financial support. Our set is Bouvet and our script is being written. Everyone works in unison to create a really great show. We invite you to support our plans and participate in this show. Let me tell you some more about our plans. The Braveheart has been chartered to take 14 of us to Bouvet We'll be on station at Bouvet for 20 days. And this will include setting up the camp and tearing down the camp. We anticipate weather permitting that we'll have 14 to 16 days of good radio activity. That's certainly what we hope for. We'll be active on 10 meters through 160 meters on CW, sideband and digital modes. As you can see, we've hired the best ship there is, the Braveheart. Essentially, their six-man crew becomes part of our team. They'll do a lot of the heavy lifting and help us be successful. Really, really will need their help. We've got the best equipment lined up. We're delighted that Elecraft is going to provide us with the K4 radios. Um, we're super excited about that. Thank you, Elecraft. Inov Antennas has stepped up to provide us with their Yagi antennas for the high bands, 10, 12, 15, 17, and 20 meters. We're really delighted to use the Inov antennas. And DX Engineering, who is always a stellar supporter of all of our DX expeditions and just really helps us be successful. They're providing us with low band antennas, coax, and other accessories. So we have a huge debt of gratitude to Elegraph. Inov antennas and DX engineering. Without them, really, we just could not 
get this done. It, it, it's just a huge undertaking. And when the vendors uh, such as these step up, it just really adds to our ability to be successful. We've assembled the best team. These are strong, experienced operators res ready for the physical challenges of Bouvet. Um, we're delighted that we have two physicians on the team and just a lot of experienced uh, de-expeditioners. Um, we've really focused on trying to get a fit, healthy team as we know that this is really gonna be a very difficult and challenging de-expedition. Our VP8 STI and VP8 SGI de-expeditions in 2016 prepared us for the challenges of Bouvet. On those islands, we made a combined 135,000 contacts with 16, 16 days of activity from the number three and the number eight most wanted DXCC entities. Our Norwegian team members are also planning a activation this summer from uh, Franz Karl land uh, in the Norwegian area. Now they'll, they'll certainly uh, be out in the elements. We're also very, very grateful to the many uh, foundations and clubs that are supporting our plans. Um, the team is going to be funding half the costs of the de-expedition. Our Braveheart Charter is enormous, um, much more than, uh, than it costs to go to South Sandwich or South Georgia. Uh, the reason for that is that there's no safe uh, anchorage for the Braveheart at Bouvet, and they will be constantly in motion with the engine running during our 20 days on the island. So uh, significant charter costs and fuel costs associated with this particular entity. And I've received a lot of questions and I'll take your questions in just a moment. But I have some questions here that were sent to me and I'd like to just take a moment to answer those. A bit, where is our camp located? We've identified three potential landing and campsites at Bouvet outside of the exclusionary zone called Nairoisa. Uh, we're not permitted to land or camp there. Um, the weather and sea conditions present when we arrive is largely gonna dictate which of these three locations we're going to camp at. There is no one ideal location at Bouvet uh, that, that uh, benefits everybody. Um, some locations favor EU, some locations favor uh, Asia. Um, the Nairois uh, exclusionary zone favors North America, but again, we can't camp there. So um, we have identified three places. We can't get more specific than that right now because we just really don't know what the weather and the seas are gonna allow for us right now. So we don't wanna, we don't wanna put out bad information. Um, we've been asked a lot if we're going to use DXA or Club Blog Live, and uh, right now that's not a part of our plans. Um, we know from using Iridium and Inmarsat at South Sandwich in South Georgia that down there at 54 degrees south, you're, you're on the edge of uh, Inmarsat coverage, and it's very difficult to even uh, get a connection with the Inmarsat satellites, let alone maintain a sustained connection. We have put in orders for uh, SpaceX Starlink. We hope that uh, we get to have the Starlink terminals and we hope that they have polar coverage in 2023, but we can't be sure of that at this point. But right now we're just planning one log upload per day. Um, will we work EME or satellites? Uh, our focus is gonna be on 10 meters through 160 meters on HF. Um, we're, we're just really gonna try to kill it on those modes and those bands and, and do uh, as, as best as we can. Um, we've been asked a lot, are we gonna use the radio in the box technology? <laughs> um, we're not, we're gonna have a team in a tent and, and radio box on the table. Um, this is gonna be an old fashioned de-expedition. Um, the, the going ashore is gonna be very difficult and. Uh, and a little bit uh, scary. So we don't wanna be going back and forth to the boat. We're gonna 
uh, land on the island and try to stay on the island for 20 days. So no, no plans to use the radio in a box. And lastly, you were asked a lot if we're gonna use 60 meters. And the answer is yes. Um, our 60 meter activity will be limited as it doesn't count for DXCC. It's also not available to all countries. So don't expect a huge focus on uh, 60 meters, but we will do some activation there probably towards the second half of the D expedition. And with that, I'd be very happy to take any questions that you might have. Hey, um, we have one so far. Roger Cook says, uh, you said digital, but that suggests FTA to me. Will you be using RIDI? We have some real uh, RIDI enthusiasts on our team, um, particularly my good friend, June, JH4RHF. He loves RIDI. And um, yes, we'll do some ready, definitely. <laughs> uh, Peter Meyer has an interesting question. He says, since this is such an expensive undertaking, <coughs> has your group considered, <coughs> excuse me, combining resources with the rebel guys? If not, why not? Um, no, this is a separate project. We wish them well with their projects wherever they go. And this is a separate project. We have our way of doing things. And um, so that hasn't, that hasn't uh, been uh, discussed, but we wish them well in, in their endeavors, whatever they do. Anyone else has a question? Uh, Will there be any possibility of some six meter operation, says Charles Dietz. <clears throat> You know, we, we worked very hard from South Sandwich and South Georgia on six meters and we made zero QSOs. Um, when we're active on six meters, we're essentially pulling a station and an amplifier off of HF activity. And um, we've evaluated things and given a lot of consideration, but we just really can't justify um, trying on six meters when we know that HF will be fruitful. So right now there's no plans for six meter activity and I don't expect that that's gonna change. Marsh, here's, do a it. here's a question I know you're gonna to love to answer, Paul. Tell everyone, how can we donate to your D expedition? Oh, that's a great question, Richard. I'm really glad that you asked that. Um, we have a website, uh, a big thanks to Lucas W6AER, our webmaster. He's put together a really great website. Uh, you can send a check to the Intrepid DX group if you're in the US. Um, that's the best way uh, as PayPal takes nearly 4% of every donation. But otherwise you can use our website and our donors link. We have PayPal buttons in uh, US dollar, uh, Japanese yen, uh, <coughs> British pound. So <laughs> there's a way to donate for everybody. We and appreciate are, any and all you, support. Are you tax exempt in the United States? We are. The Intrepid DX Group is a 501c3 nonprofit organization uh, in the US. OK, so contributions are tax deductible, and uh, at least to US citizens. They are. Um, and um, yes, we, we, we can issue a, a letter thanking people for their tax deductible uh, donation, just as the Northern California DX Foundation does. But we're not competing with Northern California DX Foundation. This is our sole effort going to Bouvet. A couple of people have asked, what amplifiers will you be using? We're going to use the Expert 1.3 KFA amplifiers. They, they proved themselves at South Sandwich in South Georgia. They're indestructible. Um, they're lightweight, easy to, to handle, and uh, they just, they're just amazing. They keep operating. Even when your antennas are on the ground and you don't know it, they just keep working. <laughs> Ryan Rumsey asks, will there be a band schedule posted on your website? What bands and when will you be on them? Uh, the band plan is on our website currently. Um, we're working with Stu K6TU. He's working up some propagation profiles for us and the, the propagation page of the website will be uh, updated in the coming weeks and months with more information to give, give both the team guidance and also our audience guidance on 
what bands we should use during what times. So that's all being worked on. You referred to uh, locations and said you're not ready to share all that. Uh, somebody's asking a question, can you share a map of the potential locations? I assume down the road when it's when uh, it's it's locked in a little bit more, you'll be able to share that information. Yes, but but specifically we're, you know, there's 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 three sites. They tend to be on the eastern side of the island. Um, you know, there's there's quite a dramatic slope on the island so um we we can we can share yeah we can share you know the general vicinity but not specifically no we just really won't know until we get there yeah yeah well, that's fair is anybody in the audience anybody any of the attendees um if you want to ask a question personally raise your hand and i can uh, unmute you all right here's one right here john john payton I'm, I've unmuted your mic. You're on the air, John. Hi. Um, what's, yeah. your call, what's your call sign, John? Oh, it's November 7, Gulf Hotel Zulu. I'm in Tucson, Arizona. Thank you. Uh, well, you said you can't camp there. I know you said earlier you weren't really considering the, the radio in a box solution, but uh, in that area that's favorable to North America, might you reconsider... Uh, Doing that as a secondary site, that way you can hit North America and then use the sites that you can camp at and that for like the EU. Hi, let, let me clarify that the area known as Nairoisa, that's an exclusionary zone. We're not allowed to camp anywhere near there. That's where the Norwegian Polar Institute has declared a, a no man's uh, zone. Uh, their science base is there. Um, they have instruments there and they don't want us uh, landing there so um, we're not planning to land there and we have no plans for radio in a box we think it's a great idea for those type of entities where it's a good fit but with uh, bouvet we're we're going to be there constantly filling generators and and uh, tending to antennas blowing down and all that kind of stuff so it it's not a good fit for bouvet but certainly for other places here's one question uh, where will you uh, be departing from? Chile or Cape Town or? Yeah, good question. Um, the Braveheart is gonna meet us in Cape Town and they're gonna return us to Cape Town 42 days later. Paul Gasix asks, if you weren't taking the K4, what's your backup? What's your number two choice? Uh, the K3S. <laughs> good answer. John Harris, uh, you've got your hand up. I'm assuming you want to talk, so I've just opened your mic. John Harris, you're on the air. Thank you very much. This is John. What, your call sign? N6UOP from Lawrence, Kansas. Great. My question is, I love these de expeditions and the talk that you guys do with them, but my question is, what kind of food are you going to take with you and what your menus are going to be like? <laughs> yeah, that's a great question. So uh, out of safety's sake, we're going to bring the military meals ready to eat or MREs. We're going to bring enough of those for the 14 team members to consume three or four per day during our duration, but also to have on hand for emergencies. Uh, the Braveheart crew will be coming ashore and bringing us um, fuel and water and occasional meals, but we also know that there'll be times where the weather or the seas won't allow them to come ashore and we'll be consuming the meals ready to eat. What does penguin taste like? <laughs> <laughs> bring, bring a lot I of hope we don't have to find out. I really hope we... Bring hot sauce with you. A lot of hot yeah, sauce. Yeah, I hope we don't get desperate for penguin. Richard Roby, you, you have your hand up and you are now live. Richard Roby. Richard, un, un, you. Okay, can you hear me okay? We can. You're okay, good. Paul, I'm curious too. You know, the island, like you mentioned, has a pretty severe slope on it. So, how do you explain a little bit about how you when you get on the island how you're going to be set up i mean you obviously you would want to have a table or maybe not and how about the tents how do you how do you manage to stay there and stay and keep the wind the wind chill and all that under reasonably good control outside of clothing i'm 
just curious about how you're going to be able to survive the elements out there. Yeah, that's a great question. So um, right now we're actively researching polar uh, caliber tents. Um, we're looking at tents that are certified to withstand winds of 100 miles an hour or more. Uh, those tents are not trivial. They're not inexpensive. They're, they're actually quite expensive. Um, but they should protect us. And we're looking at least two or three of those tents, uh, the polar uh, class tents. Um, basically, if you research what's used in Antarctica, that's a lot of what we're looking at. Um, we know that we, we, we just have to plan and expect to get winds of 100 miles an hour, 110 miles an hour. We believe that we probably had winds in that range while we were at South Sandwich in South Georgia, but we were, we were just down on the floor and there's no way to measure it. Um, we know that the antennas, uh, you know, the wind and weather is going to be a big challenge. The antennas are going to blow down. We're going to be constantly out putting them back up and securing things. Um, the, the weather will be our most significant challenge and, and we're ready for it. We'll, we'll use the right equipment, the right, the right tools, the right technologies and the right shelters. We'll be fine. All right, Jim uh, Wysocki, uh, I see your hand up and uh, it's your turn to ask a question. You're on the air. Jim Wysocki, go ahead. Can you hear me okay now? Yep, what's your call sign? Yeah, Whiskey Nine Foxtrot Italy. I'm in Tucson, Arizona. Um, yeah, question, it sounds like you're not gonna be using online logs or any, any uh, uh, delayed logging. So what's your policy going to be on dupes? Um, I always tell people and I tell my team work dupes. Um, obviously people, people call you again because they're not sure. And we want you to be sure. Um, we want you to be in the log. We're, we're not going there to not work people. So, you know, if you need to dupe us to be sure, do it. Um, and again, we base our reluctance to offer real-time logging because we know how challenging it is. When we were at South Sandwich in South Georgia, we had a very difficult time locking on to the, the Inmarsat uh, satellite. And we used our Iridium phone and called Inmarsat and said, hey, we're, we're on this crazy island in the middle of nowhere and we're trying to use your satellite. And they said, well, turn your terminal towards uh, Tunisia. That satellite is doing a figure eight pattern over Tunisia. So point in that direction. And we found that there was about a five minute window out of each day where we could lock onto that satellite and do a quick upload. And, and uh, it was really just by chance. So we, we had to hit it at the exact same time every day or we, we couldn't lock on. So um, we pretty well know that, that offering real-time logging is a, a formula for failure. We just don't want to offer that. Okay, yeah. thanks. Harry's. Harry Saunders has a question for you. Seasickness has been a real problem on previous trips there. Is there anything better to deal with this on your prolonged voyage? Well, I'm not a medical doctor, but we were just talking about that yesterday as the team. Um, I've seen team members get horribly sick and the two team physicians, uh, they're able to give an injection, which uh, helps people uh, recover from seasickness uh, pr pretty, pretty dramatically. So. Um, it's always best to prevent it. Those patches seem to work real well before departure. Once you we get underway and you're sick, uh, it's no fun. We have um, um, somebody here, a couple more guys that are in line with the microphone. Deepak, Victor Uniform 2, Charlie Delta Papa. Oh, it looks like he just dropped off. So let's go to Henry, uh, Henrik or Henrik Weiss. Uh, got you unmuted, Hon Henrik or Henri. Unmute yourself there if you'd like to ask a question. Uh, yes, can you hear me? Yes, your call All sign, right. your call sign. This is OZ1ING Henrik from Denmark. We're very yeah. excited to hear about your endeavors. And the Danish DX group is certainly sponsoring you. Uh, just something that came to mind, uh, traveling to those southern latitudes, uh, do you have within your program of those, um, the team members, a concerted effort of staying physically and mentally healthy 
up toward the goal because it's it's something. <laughs> you're, Henrik, you're you're very correct. It's uh, it's both physically and mentally challenging. I can tell you on our South Sandwich to South Georgia trip, every team member we found our physical and our emotional limits. Um, uh, we found levels of exhaustion we didn't know existed. We were we were tested more than ever before. Um, a lot of our team members are very experienced. We're already discussing the physical uh, conditioning. Um, we're all trying to get in shape and lose weight, uh, myself included. And um, we know we know what the emotional challenges are. Uh, working very hard without food, without rest. Um, it's going to be extremely challenging, but we've assembled the, what we think is the right team to, to give us the best chance of success. We're pretty confident that we can do that. Thank you for your question, Henri. Um, next, we have Deepak, Victor Uniform 2, Charlie Delta Papa. You came back up again. Unmute your mic. Unmute un, un your mic. <clears throat> you have to unmute your microphone. Okay, you're on the air. Uh, hi, Paul. Uh, as I understand, getting on the island hinges on uh, just making chopper trips, right? Do you have any contingency plans, you know, in case the, the chopper is not able to make as many number of trips or, God forbid, not fly at all off the boat? How, how do you get on the island then? I mean, I, I don't know if there's a possibility to get on a Zodiac and then climb up the sheer cliffs. Yeah, so this de expedition does not include the use of a chopper. Um, that would bring uh, additional expense that we're just not ready to face. Uh, the use of a chopper and the reliance on pilots who may need absolute perfect weather to fly is, is just a factor that we didn't want to inject into this de-expedition. Um, so our plan is to use small boats like Zodiacs, um, make a landing on shore, and we've identified uh, several small beaches and then yes, we'll have to, to do some serious uh, climbing up uh, a vertical face to get up onto Bouvet. Uh, we're working now to devise ways to do that, including uh, devising a, a, like an A-frame type crane so we can lift our gear uh, up uh, onto Bouvet once we, once we get on shore. So uh, it's gonna be men in boats and, and and scale up the, the face and on the bouvet. No helicopter uh, as part of this trip. Thank you for your Thank question. You. you can see that these questions are concerning questions. They're concerned about your health and yeah. and uh, that's very interesting. Next up is Jim Warnar. Jim, nice to hear you. Nice to see you there. Unmute your mic and you're on the air. So the, okay, can you hear me now? Yes, Jim, go for it. Okay, well, uh, Paul, congratulations. Uh, uh, my, my call sign is November 9, Tango Kilo, and I was a 2018 team member to uh, Bouvet. And uh, I, I, I just, uh, I don't have a specific question, but I just want to wish you guys all the luck in the world. It's an amazing place. Uh, and I would also like to donate all my polar gear to you guys. Is there, can I, where can I send it? Because I don't think I'll need it again. <laughs> well, that's a really kind offer for you, Jim. Um, can you shoot me an email? My yeah. my address on qrz.com is good. And we'll ask you what size uh, it is. And we'll try to, to identify a team member that might need some gear. Thank I, you for I was that thinking, offer, Jim. Yeah, I'll, I'll take care of it. I'll send you an email uh, in you. the next day or two. Good luck, you great. guys. Stay safe. Thank you. Nice seeing you again, Jim. All about Same 7 here, Thank you. Uh, Go ahead, uh, Rich, uh, one of the Q&As. Yeah, um, Paul, we, uh, we saw you've got an incredible uh, team of experienced uh, contesters, uh, experienced the expeditioners. Are you doing anything on this trip or other trips to uh, train and bring up new hams, new people for uh, upcoming the upcoming D expeditions? Um, well, we've got a couple guys on the team that are uh, new to de-expeditioning. They've done some IOTA activations and some uh, activations within their country. And so we have three or four guys that uh, this is going to be a real big one uh, under their belt by the time we're done with this. So we hope that they'll go on and do big, great things uh, with the 
knowledge and the skills that they acquire as part of their trip? So the answer is yes, yes. We've always welcomed newcomers on our teams, always. Another, uh, another person that would like to chat with you is Bill Erickson. Bill, I'm gonna unmute, uh, you can unmute your mic. Okay, it says press the sp space bar, can you hear me? <laughs> we can, what's your call sign, Bill? November 6, Mike X-Ray United. Go for it. And uh, here is my, uh, I guess, comment and question. I was uh, uh, a donator to the failed D expedition, $1,500 worth. I declined to uh, get a refund. They said they would pass it forward. So I have uh, one comment. And I, I'm thrilled that you're taking the brave heart because of that the poor performance of the previous uh, ship. And my second question, or my question is, did any of that money get pushed forward to you from NCDXF? Um, well, NCDXF has made a, a tremendous uh, uh, pledge to support us. Um, they're providing $100,000. Uh, so I think the answer is yes, and in addition, uh, some of the members of the 3Y0Z team, uh, Craig uh, Thompson, Glenn Johnson, are also among some of our larger donors. So I, I, I think the answer is yes, certainly. Thank you for your well, question. That's really good news. Uh, I, okay. You, oh, sorry. Thanks we, a lot. Thank you. We, we've got a, we're running out of time here. Let's see, uh, one, maybe one or two more Q&As, Rich. Uh, sure. Uh, I, this is going to be a tough one. Any chance of working the East Coast on 160? Wow, that's a good question. Um, you know, 160 is one of those bands where it's unpredictable. Uh, you just never know. Uh, I know some guys that have four squares on the, on the uh, East Coast, and um, I tend to think there will be some contacts. And you know, we have some of the best low band guys on our team. Um, and I just got to think that, that if, if it can be done, they'll do it. I think that uh, we're going to have to leave it at that. It's uh, one almost one o'clock now and we're going to, we're going to move on to our next speaker, but Paul, uh, it's great that you had a chance to, uh, give us a nice outline. Obviously you can tell from the questions that people are really interested in, and in your success with a capital S. So uh, I'm sure there's gonna be a lot more communication from you and through your website and other, uh, other ways as well. Uh, we wish you the best of luck. Thank you, good luck. Bye everybody. <clears throat> okay, I think we're uh, right on schedule here yeah. when I can tell. Thank you. Oh, best of luck to you guys.